Hey everyone, hope you're all having a nice weekend. Um, I posted like three videos this last week on GameStop on the movements in the market uh, this crazy week with Roaring Kitty, you know, playing the calls and then eventually exercising them and more shenanigans by market makers and hedge funds to try to keep the price down using block trades. If you want to see those videos, please go back to my channel, check those out. Today we're going to be covering the DRS shareholder ledger. Now, these numbers came out um, earlier uh, in last week, so we've already seen them, but for those of you who haven't seen them or haven't read the Twitter threads I've made on them or any of the t individual tweets I've made or the Twitter spaces we did, this video is for you. We're going to go over the the summary of what happened, the big changes that were seen, and what we can expect moving forward. And overall, this last couple days of the DRS, you know, kind of digesting the results of DRS has been pretty bullish, right? We've seen some pretty insane and, you know, good um, progress on this front. So let's get into it. Um, let me, I'm sharing my screen, so let me do presentation mode. Hopefully you all can see this. Um, if not, let me know. Um, we will go right ahead. So I'm going to go over quite a few things. And again, I want to put credit for uh, Lawson and Six Days who helped to put this um, PowerPoint together because they were massively instrumental in going to Grapevine and actually recording their stockholder list. So really appreciate them for putting together this PowerPoint. We're going to go over the TLDR, TLDR overall stats, the comp comparison of 2024 to last year, international positions, um, the the distribution, the the top you know 463, and then the uh, LLCs and IRAs. So those are also include some spicy, spicy uh, updates. Okay, so here's the TLDR, and again I'll zoom in if you can't see this. Um, but I'll read through these really quickly, the most important things. Pure DRS shareholders increased significantly from 54 million to 62, so it's up 14%. And the record holders increased from 132 to 143,000, up 8%. So we've made progress, significant progress on the DRS front, not only in terms of shareholders, but record holders as well. And as we'll get into it in the numbers, it appears that several countries have gone from being about 80% DRS, pure DRS, meaning like book to 92, 95, even one at 99.7%. So registered share totals increased 167,000. Um, shares labeled plan went way down from 3.4 million to 2.8 million. So down 20%, which is good. The effort to educate investors on plan versus book appears to be successful. And there's a lot of people that are finally moving out of the plan shares and going back into pure book. So it's really good. And to illustrate this, right, like of the top 463 holding positions, 90% were pure DRS compared to only 78% last year. The international holders are 93.7% pure DRS, 49,000 pure DRS holders out of 53,000 total. U.S. holders are only 66. So U.S. is lagging behind. Now, that could probably be due to the fact that a lot of the subs – um, internationally aren't as censored as hard as the as the main sub for the U.S., which is super stonk. So, you know, the German, you know, super stonk Reddit or the, you know, Hong Kong or the Korean GME Reddit, all of those uh, have seen much less suppression, much less overall moderation. And so that means that those, you know, the message of DRS has been able to be pushed through much better on those, um, on those forms rather than in you know, uh, our domestic market, our domestic Reddit, because I myself have seen, right, <laughs> my own post taken down pretty quickly whenever I mentioned DRS. And I put up a, uh, a subsec piece a few months ago on DRS. And that one got taken down within about 30 minutes. So they don't like you talking about DRS over there. So just be careful. Just warn you. Hong Kong 99.7% pure DRS with a country leading 872 shares per holder. So that's around double the U.S. We have like something like four, uh, 390, 400 something shares per holder. Last year was funny. It was 420 shares per holder in the U.S. So we were exactly at that, at that ratio. 
Our largest holder increased their position 17% from 1.2 million shares to 1.4 million pure DRS shares. The number of countries, and oh, by the way, this person is an individual investor, and they are extremely wealthy, and their position has been confirmed by multiple people, including Ian Carroll, Lawson, and Six Days, like in person, as in they went to her house and looked at the list, you know, looked at their computer share accounts and verified everything, and then double cross that with the with the shareholder ledger that GameStop holds, as well as the computer share numbers, and everything matched. So this person literally has dumped, you know, tens of millions of dollars into GME, and they are continuing to do it, right? It's incredible. The number of countries holding registered shares remained the same. The UK has the third most most shoulders yet third most holders yet doesn't even have a GameStop store. There are 64 international holders with 10,000 more shares, approximately 500 U.S. shoulders, U.S. holders with 10,000 more shares. Our largest international holder is from Ireland, holding 203,000 pure DRS shares. The average U.S. holder, so there's that number I mentioned earlier, 409. Average international is 333. 194,000 holders, 176,000 unique. So that means they took out duplicates. So someone, let's say, you know, opening multiple accounts, someone holding, you know, um, using LLCs and then using their own name. If you eliminate all those, 176,000 unique holders. Average individual investor holds 426 shares. So like I said, that's up six. So last year was 420. The average account holds 389. So... Again, very significant. Those are pretty big numbers. 309 LLCs with some interesting ape names, holding a total of 691,225 shares. The Mainstar account, one of them at least is holding 1,000 shares. Remember, most of Mainstar's accounts were undrs Back in last summer, in about, um, I think it was June of 2023, Mainstar, which is an IRA provider, undrs 1.4 million <coughs> shares trying to free them up for shorting and allowing them to go back into the hands of the DTCC. And that's unfortunate because it put us back, you know, quite a bit. But we, we've been able to recover pretty nicely. Um, and so the, the hope is, right, we can avoid ha- using brokers that will do that again or, or custodians that will do that again. And the top 10% hold 66.8% of shares. The top 20% hold 81% of shares. And the top 25% hold 86% of shares. So that's, you know, obviously the parade distribution, just wealthy people who are buying, you know, bigger apes are just loading up on these shares. And, and as we see with this, with this one massive whale, the super whale, right, as we can call them, they own 1.4 million shares, which, you know, at current prices, right, let's just do like back of the napkin math. Um, that would be, you know, $20, $39 million. <laughs> insane okay so let's look at the stats okay so here's 2024 so overall and again i I should mention these numbers are as of april 19th so this is before the two dilutions remember in you know mid-may late may there was a dilution of 45 million shares and then again in june we had a dilution of 75 million shares so you know adding that up total of 120 million shares diluted so that means that these numbers are liable to change, right? There was also a lot more buying activity in the last two months since DFV reemerged. And so we expect, you know, these numbers could change and fluctuate wildly as of the next stockholder meeting um, as a, uh, or as of the next, you know, DRS record date. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens. But, you know, with the mass amount of, of buying and DRSing, and especially if, if DFV DRSs his shares, then we could see a huge change, right? A huge change in um, in overall uh, DRS numbers. But this is as of April twenty uh, or April nineteenth. Excuse me. So let's get into it, right? Okay. So at the time, two hundred thirty million shares outstanding in Seed and Co. There were seventy five million shares in pure DRS and direct stocks. That means combined uh, for a total of of 306 million shares. We had 194,000 record holders, which equated to 176,000 unique investors. Uh, 
The average shares per account, 389, median shares of 80. Now, we have 62 million shares now in pure DRS um, and only 13 million in the direct stock plan. So the direct stock plan, if you remember right, this is this number right here. You can have book shares in a direct stock plan, but because the book shares are in the plan, in the direct stock plan, this entire, all the shares in the direct stock plan can be used for what is called operational efficiency, which means the DTCC can use any shares in this plan, even if they're book shares, they can use, because the book shares are under the plan umbrella, think of it like an umbrella, uh, they can use these shares for operational efficiency to draw them back into the DTCC and use them for borrowing and lending to short your shares. So if you're in the direct stock plan, your shares are going to be lent out most likely. And the DTCC, right, computer shares official quote of the number that the or the percentage that the DTCC uses for this is 20%. But they, they mention that that's for a typical stock. They say 20% of the shares of a typical stock are used for operational efficiency and put back into the DTCC. As we all know, GameStop isn't really typical. We're anything but, right? And so this is this is pretty different. <laughs> it's probably going to be 100% of these shares are being given back to the DTCC. So if you have book shares and they're in a direct stock plan, you're not really fully booked. You need to be this number. And so it's good, right, that we see this is 82% of, of um, you know, of shares are held in pure DRS versus 17%. And as we mentioned, that's a significant improvement from last year. Last year's only 71%. This year's 82%. So we're seeing a pretty big jump. And, you know, not only is the total share count, um, you know, pure DRS increasing slightly. So we saw this number go from 75 million, 467,000 to 76 million. So we gained about, a, you know, um, half a, a little, let's see, 600,000 shares of pure DRS plus direct stock. So, oh, whoops, sorry about that. So we gained about 600,000, so that's good. But the bigger the bigger news here is the adjustment, right? The bigger news here is the fact that we were able to convert more people who just held shares in general to move back into pure DRS. So that's pretty substantial. Okay. So again, just to recap, we have a 14% increase in pure DRS. The holders increased, registered shareholders increased, and shares label plan went down. All good things. All good things. Okay, so here's the record holders per country. Now, um, obviously the U.S. being an extremely wealthy country and where GameStop is domiciled is the largest by far, 141,000 record holders. But Canada, Britain, right, Denmark, um, and Australia, um, this is Netherlands. Oh, sorry, this is probably uh, Germany. Um, Sweden, all of these still have substantial amount of record holders. And, you know, in total, they don't include all of these uh, countries here, but 137 countries in total own GameStop shares. So we're a global phenomenon. And as you can see here, it's breaking down by, um, you know, the country. The U.S. obviously takes the entire cake. We're almost 75%, uh, almost three-fourths of the, of the total. And here's more broken down. So these are the smaller countries, right? Um, the next 10, you know, excluding the U.S., uh, Canada, U.K., Germany, all have big, big share share percentages here. Here's the international stats. So uh, one thing I wanted to point out, right? And we already mentioned this at the outset. Every other country is beating us in terms of percentage of pure DRS. So as you can see here, Hopefully, you can I'll zoom in. Pure DRS, Australia, Canada, Germany, ninety-one percent, ninety-one percent, ninety point four, and the biggest outlier here is Hong Kong, who, with only about a thousand holders, they have ninety-nine point seven percent DRS, pure DRS. So, right, only a, a few shares that aren't pure DRS, only a few. And so that's really, really encouraging. Shows that our, you know, the message has been getting out. But with the U.S., we failed at this, right? We're at 66%. So only two-thirds. So the overall total, 
that should be a lot higher, right, has been diluted down by the U.S. just because also of our, because of our size, because of how big the U.S. is, 143,000 pure DRS count and 75 million, um, you know, registered shares in total with the U.S. having 55 million of that, right? So we're a big whale. So this number, if we want to see the DRS numbers move, the main movement has to be in the U.S. We have to see people in the U.S. change this, uh, you know, change the change this number. We need to see more people move to pure DRS. So if you or a loved one own shares and they're not pure DRS, please go to GME, uh, drsgme.com and look for the instructions with your broker, um, how to transfer your shares out of the broker back into the computer share, and then how to use computer share to, to DRS, pure DRS your shares. So the overall position distribution, right, these are some of the some of the stats. A lot of you are not math-based, so I'm not going to break everything down. But I guess the important thing to note is that this is mainly a retail phenomenon. If this was only wealthy people, right, we would see an extremely high average and extremely low median. Now, what does that mean? That means basically the whales would be pushing the average up, pulling it up slightly. If you can imagine, you know, if you have a room of five people and Bill Gates walks in, the average net worth of the people in the five room goes up massively, right? But the median net worth, which is the center point of the distribution, right, wouldn't change because of the five people, the middle person, their net worth is the median and their net worth wouldn't change at all. And so what we want to see is a median that's, at, you know, substantially high, right, shows that there's a significant retail investment. And the median is 80. So that's really good. That means that a lot of people, the majority of people, on the distribution have around 80 shares. And I think at current prices, right, 80 shares times we closed at 28, roughly $28 today is $2,400, $2,200. So that's really good. $2,200 is held by most retail investors in GameStop. And the smallest account has a fractional share. The largest account, as we mentioned earlier, has 1.4 million shares. And here's the distribution, right? vast majority of people are under this, you know, between zero and two or 300 shares. Very few people out um, in this extreme into the 30,000. Of course, this doesn't go far enough to, to track the one, 1. 1.4 million share whale that we see. Okay, and this is the decile. So showing the, um, you know, 10 parts, all the, all the uh, record holders divided into um, their deciles um, by tens, right? And we see um, the number of shares held by each decile. So 10% hold 4, 20%, you know, the next 20% hold 10, 23.6, 44, 80. That's that median we talked about. 134, all the way up to ex the extreme, the 100th percentile, that, that one lady we talked about, the whale, 1.4 million. So as you can see, this, this does skew to the lower end, which means this is mostly a retail-heavy phenomenon. Mostly, this is a ton of small investors getting in. <clears throat> and then there's, again, the number of shares. Um, I don't know why they repeated this slide again. So, okay. So, there are, each decile representing, you know, the amount of shares. The top, the, the next top 10% bring us from 11 million shares directly registered to 50 million. So these people are massive whales and they're helping to DRS us. And, you know, one of the biggest things that can happen in the next few weeks is if Roaring Kitty decides to DRS his shares, right? Because he has large, I mean, 9 million. That's almost this entire, that's almost 90% of all the DRS that retail has done. Um, Roaring Kitty could do in a single swoop if he just moves his shares to computer share and tries to DRS all of them and watch, you know, we could just watch what happens, right? And here's the distribution by decile, like we said. Mostly top heavy, but <clears throat> in terms of share count, but in terms of numbers of people, this would look the opposite. It would look like, you know, tons and tons of retail here in the 10, 20, and 30, 30th decile and moving down into almost nobody here at the 100th, right? One person. <laughs> And this is the summary. Again, we just went over this. So um, this is a Pareto distribution typical of basically any economic system. You know, people who are more well-off will own more. And it's good to see that we got some whales on our side. Here's the raw data. 
Here's some more raw data. Oh, there's a raw data of the 20th of the 20s. Now, here's the stockholder list. Again, we have this massive whale. We have several large, you know, the top 10 whales. Almost all of them are over 100,000 shares. Again, all of these people in the top 10 have been, um, or most of them, as far as I understand, have been verified on the shareholder list. So we know for a fact that these people are, you know, real, for real. They actually have this amount of shares. And... The rest of these shareholders, you know, these these share numbers are really huge too. I mean, twenty four thousand, twenty thousand, twenty two thousand. These these equates these equate to millions and millions of dollars. And this top one, like we said earlier, equates to thirty four million dollars at current market prices. And here's some more large positions. I won't go through all of these, but the top four hundred sixty three positions hold eleven million shares. So a huge, huge number. Okay, LLCs. Now, there's 209 of them. They hold a total of 691,000 shares. One of the funny things that people mentioned um, in the Spaces call is that the LLCs all have, or a lot of them, I should say, have funny names. So a lot of them say, you know, uh, <laughs> DFE is my is my wife's boyfriend LLC, or, you know, Ape to the Moon, or, you know, Rocket Ship to Uranus, or whatever. Like, just funny names. They, they clearly, whoever created these LLCs clearly made them just to signal to apes that they were, you know, as part of the movement and that they wanted to participate. And as we can see here, all, all of the LLCs hold thousands of shares. All of these large LLCs hold thousands of shares. And the top one owns almost 40,000 shares. So these are pretty big whales as well, right? 40,000 shares. Again, uh, we can do the math if you want really quick. 40,000 is 1.1 million. So whoever that is, you know, owns a lot. Okay, and then there's that Main Star Trust IRA, and then there's 18 different IRAs that are smaller that have these uh, positions. So these are these custodians that have hold shares. You know, it looks like a total of around, you know, 15, 18 million shares, or 18,000 shares, excuse me, in RAs. And it's unfortunate, right, that Main Star had undrs their shares. And so we lost around 1.4 million, um, 1.4 million DRS shares uh, in June of last year. Okay, that's it. That's all I have for you guys.